Hello, we're here to talk about The Secret World of Ariety, the latest from Studio Ghibli. Uh, and this is not a Miyazaki-directed film, but it was uh, written by him, uh, based off the book The Borrowers, and it, it, very odd credit, it just says planned by him. I don't know what that means. I mean, does that sort of mean he kind of directed it, or maybe, I, I don't know. But it's not directed by him, but it's Studio Ghibli, it's from his uh, uh, studio. Um, so, okay, the... These damn films, you know? I think these movies are going to be looked back on, like, people are going to look sort of look back on these as, like, sort of classic films, uh, in a sense, because they're actually, I think these and Pixar films are really taking their audience, their younger audience, seriously, and I friggin' love that. I love the fact it's like, hey, we're not gonna throw in pop cultural references, we're not gonna throw in, like, you know, uh, two-year-old jokes or poo-poo jokes or anything like that, like, and we're not gonna, you know, do whatever's hip and new. It's like, I like it when they're just doing their own thing. And they're treating kids like they're smart, like they're gonna listen. And I know they're not always. <laughs> I, I mean, everyone's like, a lot of people come up to me and they're like, don't you think, like, you know, sort of this naive thought that kids will, uh, you know, really watch this stuff, even though there's a lot of quiet moments, there's a lot of dialogue and stuff like that. They at least deserve the option, okay? I mean, a lot of films I grew up with, I watch crap too. I mean, kids watch crap, but we, d you know, kids deserve the option to watch good stuff, smart stuff. And I, I think studios like Pixar and Studio Ghibli are doing that. And I, I really admire them for that. Uh, this film, from beginning to end, I just enjoyed watching all of it. I really, I love these characters, every single one of them. Uh, the setup, like most of you know, or maybe you don't, it's based off the borrowers, which is little people uh, that live in a house, and they quote-unquote borrow stuff. It's stealing. <laughs> I, I never see them give any of the stuff back. Uh, maybe they do in the book. I don't know. I never read the book. Um, but so, and uh, one of them named Arietti comes across this boy, uh, and they form a uh, regular size boy, and they form a friendship, and it's it's pretty much just about that. And again, I like films like this. You don't need, you know, sort of these really manipulative, contrived story plots that people like to use over and over. Even though this has been seen before, with you know, there's a secret world or secret people, and they can't let the humans know. It's I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little tired of that, but at the same time. Kids like that. They like that secret world. This is just for them. So I, I can understand that, and I, I, I get why they keep using this plot over and over. Um, though I was asking myself, when, why hasn't someone done a story where, like, whatever, there's a secret person or a secret alien or animal, whatever, and they just tell everybody, and, like, the alien or whatever gets famous, and people are, you know, shocked by him. They're really in awe of him and stuff like that. Like that third Planet of the Apes movie, which was really weird, but it's like, it was pretty cool. They didn't have to keep much a secret. It's like, you know, they just became famous. And maybe we can see what fame does to them, or what uh, what they can learn or don't discover. It, it seems like you can discover a lot more that way. And you can make more interesting commentary, more interesting adventures, but I'm really getting sidetracked here. Okay. Um, it's... It's so hard to talk about this movie in terms of detail because, well, in a sense, it's all detail. It's all about this world that they inhabit. Of course, it's all that great Miyazaki stuff that you love. It's just how do these little people live? How do they get around? What are the tools that they use? And Miyazaki really seems to love tools. He loves to show how things are done. And I, we love watching them, or at least I love watching them. I, I, I think uh, the most clever thing was that they need to climb a wall, and so they have double-sided tape that they put on their hands and their feet and they use that to climb up. It's like, that is so smart, that is so clever, I love that stuff. Um, and the relationship between the boy and the girl is very good. Uh, like I said, the, the sort of side characters, you have this housekeeper played by uh, uh, Carol Burnett, she's a lot of fun. Um, here's my problem with the film, and this is a good, I really like this film. Uh, but there is a problem, I don't think it's major, but it... I, this film could have been incredible. This could have been, like, an incredible movie, because they're dealing with things here uh, in a, an adult manner, you know, that it, it are pretty heavy. Like, one of the characters uh, is uh, possibly going to die, and we don't know if the character is going to die. Uh, there's also this issue about leaving your home and finding a new home. There's also issues of, uh, you know, communicating with, uh, you know, these other people, whether or not you should or shouldn't, or, you know, being the last of your kind. Uh, possibly as well. You know, they only see one other borrower 
uh, from the outside world. So here's all this stuff that you can sort of do, and they only sort of tap on it. Uh, and the, the, the two things that come to my mind when I think about this, one is the element of danger, that they always indicate there's sort of danger everywhere, and the film does really good to do that. Like, when they're sneaking around, they just make a kitchen look really threatening and really big, and, you know, they, they have sort of these creepy sounds that really just sounds of people moving around, but they magnify them, and it's... You really sort of get this sense of, you know, you, you, you tense up a bit, like, are they, are they going to get caught? Is something going to happen? Is the cat going to see them? Is it, and... And it's great, it really works. That danger never quite comes, though. There's one scene, uh, a pretty long scene, uh, sort of near the end, which I suppose is the climax, where uh, one of them gets caught and they have to go and, and kind of save her, but it's not that much danger. It, it's sort of, you feel more like this would be the middle of the movie, not the exciting climax, or even, and here's the thing, I don't need like a big action scene, I really don't, I mean, I was actually glad they didn't have a big action scene, but they're kind of building up that there is going to be something like that, like, uh, the Arietti girl finds a, uh, she finds a pin, and she, uh, holds it like a sword, and she takes it out like a sword, and she really loves taking this thing out, you know, and acting like she's gonna use it, never does, <laughs> at least never to fight off anything, um, and again, they're really building up that everything is sort of out to get them and what a big, cruel, dangerous world this is. And they do sort of go out into, um, I guess the forest is where they are. Uh, and you do see these other animals and they look big and they look threatening, but they never attack them. They never have to fight anything off. And they build up that there's other powers out there that maybe they could see. And you see one of them who's sort of like this uh, Tarzan-type boy. Uh, you know, and it's like, ooh, what else is out there? And, you know, and the danger's out there and stuff. You never see it. Uh, and even, okay, and here's my other big, uh, issue at the end, they're sort of tied together, uh, the ending, I won't give it away, but there are, with the exception of Miyazaki's films that he's directed, uh, Studio Ghibli films in general, I have seen the other film, like Whispers of the Heart and Cat Returns and stuff like that, they really have this thing where they want to end it really fast, and I don't get that. It's like you have this really nice, sweet moment, the film's just starting to end, you know, and they expect to see, like, you know, an epilogue or some sort of understanding or maybe a quiet moment, and they start showing the credits. Like, and half the time, the film's not even over. Like, it's still going. An important part of the movie is going to uh, reveal itself while the credits and the pop song are playing, and that's really distracting. Uh, for example, let's say in uh, Lion King, like, let's say you know, where the good guy wins and he's just about to go, he's gonna roar at the, you know, um, Pride Rock and stuff like that, you know, and the rain's coming down. What if while the rain's coming down, the credits start? It, it's just... No, the movie's not done yet. Why are you showing us the credits when the film isn't over? Why are you showing us the names of these people that worked very hard on this movie when you're distracting us with the rest of the film? There's no need for that. Uh, and maybe it's a cultural thing, I don't know. Um, but this film, this film would have been a lot stronger if, I mean, A, if there was more of a danger in it, and they really sort of addressed the dangers of all the stuff they're talking about, you know, losing a life, or, uh, uh, going out into the unknown, or finding a new home, if they really, really, they talk about it, but they don't fully address it, they don't go through it, uh, or at least we don't see them go through it. And not in the ways that would be really dramatic and really huge. Um, and I think, and like I said, if this film just waited uh, to show its credits until the screen goes black, it would have been stronger. I know it sounds strange. It's just when you show the credits can really affect a film. But I mean, for those who have seen this movie, really think about it. Think about if they didn't show the credits when they did. And there, there's this long, long moment while the credits are playing. And just imagine those credits weren't there. And just imagine that scene play out. Wouldn't it have been a n much nicer scene? Wouldn't it have been a much stronger ending? I really feel it would have. Uh, and I feel that did sort of distract from it. So, but that's, to me, that's not a huge thing. I mean, it's, I think it kept it from being, something like that, and like I so said, The Element of Danger kept it from being a gigantic film. This could have been a really huge, gigantic film. But for what it is, it's still good. I mean, it is for lack of a better word, a small film. I mean, it's meant to be a, a, a small movie, and I get that. Uh, when they're tackling these issues, though, you, it, it could have been something phenomenal, but I've, I've said that before. Um, let's talk about real quick just who would like it, who would not like it. Anyone that likes 
the Studio Ghibli films, the Miyazaki films, or some stuff like that, we'll like it fine, you know. Um, it's still very creative. They're very likable characters. Uh, will kids like it, you know, like your kid or whatever? Possibly. Uh, if your kid likes... If your kid really likes this kind of creativity, uh, and they, they have this patience for this kind of film, which I like, I like it when kids have this patience. I, I had this patience growing up. I think a lot of kids do. Uh, it's sort of hard to sit them down and get through, and they might say once in a while, yeah, this is boring, but I think they want to get through it. They want to see what happens. And even if afterward they're not like, that was the greatest movie, yay! It sticks with them. I like movies that do that, uh, where kids don't realize this is actually a really, really good film. Uh, you know, they much rather see, what, Transformers or something like that. That's a great film to them at that age. But as they get older, it's like they sort of think back to that one movie. And Transformers fades, but that one movie, you know, that did sort of leave an impact. And as they get older, they suddenly realize, yeah, that, that, that was hitting something there. I never realized. And I like movies that can do that. And that's what movies that, you know, Studio Ghibli and Pixar are doing. And I really admire that. And they're, and they're taking risks doing that. You know, not doing the typical schlock, you know, taking kids seriously. So, um, so, so I think, I think those kind of people would like it. Uh, who would not like it? People that, you know, maybe they want more meat to, you know, the story, uh, because it is, like I said, it, it is a small story, and it doesn't, it, it tackles, you know, issues like death and moving and stuff, but I mean, not, not to a degree that a really strong powerhouse movie could. Uh, so if you're looking for just sort of this nice small movie, you know, sort of this nice small story, uh, you'll like it, and you'll enjoy it. And the animation, of course, is wonderful. Uh, the voice acting is wonderful. Whoever played the boy in this, uh, I, I don't know who played it. It's probably some celebrity or something, but uh, did a really good job. Uh, especially when you find out what, what the kid's going through. It's sort of like, wow, this, this kid did good. <laughs> like a really good, but I mean, everybody did a good job. I mean, I can't think of anyone that did bad. Every character's memorable. Um, so, outside of that, if you don't like Miyazaki films or Studio Ghibli films, you probably won't like this. Uh, and one or two people might be thrown off a little bit by the ending and just how quickly it, it sort of stops. I mean, no, it does end. I mean, there's an ending, but I mean, it's, like I said, they're just so fast to throw those credits at you, and I, it got to me, I think it gets to other people too, because the ending is the most important part. That's the last thing you remember. You know, that's the last thing you see. You know, make... Make an impact. Don't rush it. So, I, I do really, really enjoy this film. Um, in fact, I probably like it more than something like uh, Ponyo or something like that. Uh, because I feel they, they did get the connections there. And, and you do sort of feel, you feel a little bit of the weight of what they're talking about. And I do love the creativity of it as well. Um, and it, like I said, it's just a nice little tale. And I, I think it, it does work. And it, it's a very nice movie. So, yeah, that's about it. I shall talk to you guys later.